Hi everyone, it's Allison in my violin studio. Today I am going to talk about vibrato. Um, vibrato is a little bit of a thorny issue. I, th I think it's perceived as being very complex and I certainly am um, trying to get my ideas in order. I was looking at what's available on YouTube. There are a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of videos on how to do vibrato. Um, some of them are good. Um, some of them maybe not so good. I, usually the ones that are not great, really the only problem is is that um, people want to rush into this. I feel strongly that you should wait. <laughs> uh, I, I teach vibrato more in the third to fourth year. Um, especially if you're following Suzuki material, is you don't really need a vibrato until you start to get into the Vivaldi concertos, book four or five. Um, a lot of the stuff before is is fairly Baroque in orientation and has a lot of there's a lot of detail and you've got a lot to learn about uh, bow articulation and good left hand position. So it's um, if you rush into vibrato, it frequently um, when you have unresolved situations and then you try and throw vibrato on top of it, it can make a real mess out of everything um, that can be very difficult, if not impossible to recover from. So I strongly recommend that you take your time. If you're learning how to produce a beautiful, clear sound with good intonation, enjoy it because that's a really hard thing to develop and enjoy your accomplishments. Um, when you get to vibrato, it's actually pretty easy. Um, it's it's not everything that's made. You know, the big kerfluffle that's made about vibrato is mostly um, if you're trying to learn it before you can really manage it, of course it's, you know, you're banging your head against a stone wall. And, and the simple answer is not that I will give you a bunch of miraculous exercises. I think the answer is just wait. <laughs> you will, you know, and use your judgment to know if you yourself are ready for vibrato or if maybe this is good advice for you to just uh, forget about it for a little while, concentrate on other things. You definitely have to have quite a mature left hand. You need to have some, uh, if you have tension in the left hand at all or in the shoulder, you won't be able to do arm vibrato. And arm vibrato is probably the one you should start with. So, you know, when you can play in a relaxed manner and you have no tension, um, you're not sustaining tension in your left hand then it, it may be possible. But if you still haven't resolved the issues, if your thumb is still grabbing, your fingers are still pressing, you don't want to bring vibrato into the mess. Um, I suspect that's why um, you will see a lot of hand vibrato, uh, particularly amongst people who have perhaps dodgy violin technique. Because if you do have a bunch of tension in your left hand, probably the hand vibrato is the, the one you can manage. Um, but hand vibrato has some problems with it. There's good and bad about basic types of vibrato. There's arm vibrato and there's kind of this hand wrist stuff. Some people talk about finger vibrato. I don't really know what they mean, but there are definitely odd situations that can arise in the violin when maybe only one finger can pulsate and I guess you could call that finger vibrato. Anyway, what I really want to do, I forgot to notice what time I started at. Okay, we'll guess. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of background information so you can kind of understand the subject better and make your own judgments. Um, in the history of the violin, if you go back to the early days of the violin, vibrato was not, um, they didn't use vibrato in any sort of sustained fashion. Vibrato was considered to be an ornament that was applied to certain notes. If you had um, a note that was long, if you wanted to create tension, if you wanted to emphasize a dissonance, you would apply a little bit of vibrato and you would kind of slide into it and then come out of it. So. And keep in mind, in those early days, there were no shoulder rests, there were no chin rests. Um, the whole connection of the violin was much more through the left hand. So the, the left hand was kind of supporting the instrument. Um, I think I should know when the chin rest came in because I know who invented it and I just can't think of it offhand because I'm getting old. But I think it was in the early-ish 1800s that they started using chin rests. And so that really opened up a lot of doors because the ability to grip onto the violin a little more effectively made it much more possible to play in positions. And you'll see that the music kind of explodes, violin music explodes upwards when you start getting chin rests on the instrument. It also makes it much more possible to use a lot more vibrato. So you see the, the vibrato thing starting to be a lot more common in the 19th century. Mozart's time, I don't, I don't see any reason to think that they used tons of vibrato in Mozart's time, although 
Mozart's lifetime was a period of huge transition in violin playing. You know, that's when the modern bow was developed. Because when Mozart was a young man, they were still using um, Baroque bows, or perhaps the early, what's called transitional classical bows. So, 18th, 1800s, you start to see a lot of change in the playing. Um, a lot more vibrato. Uh, they still weren't using shoulder rests, okay? Um, so without a shoulder rest, you can't really, I don't think, you can't really do uh, what we call arm vibrato. So mostly the vibrato you would see at that period would probably have been uh, wrist or hand vibrato. And certainly into the early 20th, 20th century, that's what we still have. Um, there were people playing into the 20th century without shoulder rest. Keep in mind, most violinists in those days were men and they were wearing suits. Suits are tailored and they have stuffing in the shoulder. So there's not a lot of room for a shoulder rest. Um, maybe a little chamois. So when you start seeing the appearance of shoulder rests, it really, really substantially changed the way that people can vibrate. So you start getting the ability to vibrate from the shoulder out to the hand. Um, I've noticed on YouTube videos, some people talk about arm vibrato only coming from the elbow, but unless the scroll of your violin is going to bounce up and down, I suspect it's really moving from the shoulder. But that's, you know, my engineering criticism. Um, so, if you remember Snow White, uh, the movie, do you remember the Someday My Prince Will Come, which is... Remember? She had that really, really tight vibrato. And she was a fantastic singer and everybody loved her, but that was the fashion at that time. So, from a violin point of view, you can't do that with an arm vibrato. You need a hand vibrato. Hand vibrato is basically your 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 hand is pivoting from the wrist joint, more or less. You know, there's a million different variations of it. Um, so you can get something very intense with that. With hand vibrato, keeping in mind that that's generally the vibrato that existed at that time. tendency it's difficult to avoid having dead spots um, the good violinists solved it but I think by and large for your run-of-the-mill ordinary violinist it was probably a huge problem uh, to effectively use a hand vibrato and not have dead spots in your tune and this is certainly one of the big criticisms um, which when you're studying violin if you go to college you know you got to maintain your vibrato um, with the ability to do an arm vibrato comes you, you can kind of get it's it's um it's less intense but you can sustain you can kind of keep the pulsation going through an entire passage so that's something that was considered very desirable and when i was in school in late 70s early 80s um nobody talked about hand vibrato it was completely out of fashion however so I did, of course, my early career using only arm vibrato, which is pretty good in an orchestra context. Um, but if you look at the soloists on YouTube, <laughs> um, they, by and large, the hand vibrato is, is, continues to be an important part of solo quality playing. And I think, it, I certainly have the impression that It allows you to create a much more focused sound that will project more effectively, um, but it is a more muscular kind of a thing, and so you need to have a bow hand that goes with it. Because if you try and play a really intense vibrato on the left hand with a fairly limited bow, you end up with something... It sounds a bit undesirable. There's a relationship between kind of the velocity of the bow because the more bow you're giving the more it can carry out but if the bow isn't kind of cranking a certain amount too much here just sounds you know it can be unpleasant so keep in mind there's balance between the two um, if you're in an orchestra context <laughs> that's gonna stick out probably not blend really well Orchestra players, you're going to want a lot more arm vibrato. So you see, the different vibratos have their place. Um, there's no good, there's no 